Well, what I'm going to do is try to incorporate some research on markets and youth uh, livelihood trajectories into the general framework of the, of the workshop uh, in Jakarta. Uh, I, don't, I feel it's a little bit sort of tangential because in some ways Jakarta is one of the world's largest urban regions, one of the world's most messed up urban regions. Uh, in the sense that there's absolutely no regional mechanism, planning or governance mechanisms of any kind. There's an estimated $80 billion current infrastructural deficit. And in the next 15 years, the region's probably going to have to move 2.5 million people around just simply in order to like survive. But anyway, what, so what I'm after here is almost a kind of spectral infrastructure of uh, popular political practices in the ways in which the periphery continues to haunt the, the core in some ways. Um, and I use the word uh, uh, alliances here in, in a very particular way um, because in some ways the efficacy, historical efficacy of Jakarta has been based on alliances that refer to a convocation of details, details which are not exemplars, or components of structures which properly situate or frame them, but where discrepant in, in, idioms and places and materials can be enjoined into possible circuits and itineraries, conduits and transactions. So alliances always refer to what might be going on. There's always the sense of, I mean, part of the efficacy of the majority of Jakarta's residents has always lived through this kind of frame of what might be going on, always raising the question of, of what might be without the obligation to marshal specific forms of verification. The power of the majority has been living through this sense of what might be, might being the notion of possible, but might also in terms of what is actually going on, but which is not really being witnessed or uh, legitimated or, or observed. <laughs> Um, so some just th some quick conceptual precis. So in some ways, the, the relationship between core and periphery in Jakarta is really a sense of a relationship between different kinds of fault lines, political fault lines, particular modes of contestation. So it's like Brenner and Schmidt argue that urbanization exceeds itself not so much through the imposition of the axioms of capital, but through complex processes of instantiation where the singularities of place and history are experimentally refigured into unsettled articulations with larger surrounds, then what are the urban processes in the interstices? What are the urban processes in the interstices of basic fault lines, particular modalities of contestation? What is between the particular idiosyncratic places within cities and urban regions and urban, urbanization at the, at the metropolitan scale? So what are these, in some sense, fault lines? Well, on the one hand, urbanization in a place like the region of Jakarta is still largely a means of affiliation, affiliating things in coded relationships and contractual terms of the bringing together of things by enforcing a particular place for those things to coexist, to take their place, to be identifiable in terms of calculating devices of price, probabilities, and interoperable standards. That which enables ex extension in reaching across the world. But in some sense, this kind of process is a miniaturization and the constraint of the notion of alliances that I, that, that I talked about before. But it's the old kind of, in, like in basketball, the old kind of inside-out game. So you have this kind of colonization of the periphery by large-scale uh, industrial uh, production factories and its symbiosis with the colonization of the center through the kind of all-in-one provision of insulated li 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 living spaces. Just as an aside, the one particular outside of this particular place is that the guy who owns this stuff is the largest plantation owner in Nigeria. But that's an, a, 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 another, another story. But on the other side, on the other hand, part of the fault line, part of the locus of contestation is also that the urbanization is an intensity capable of generating strange syntheses, where exchanges are freed from producing something recognizably useful. 
So density means not just packing in a lot of stuff into a limited space, but it's the creation of particular kinds of spaces where people with their devices and their resources and tools and imaginations and techniques are always acting on each other, pushing and pulling, folding in and leaving out, making use of whatever others are doing, paying attention to all that is going on, fighting and collaborating. And it's this notion of density which makes this units in this particular building in Jakarta as valuable as this. So in some sense, the, the so-called middle class will hold on and desperately hold on to a situation like this more than they would in terms of living in a place like this. Just simply because this particular kind of situation offers for them an, in a greater density of possibilities in order to put their lives together than, than, than this. So in terms of then the, the periphery of, of, of the region, I mean, 20 years ago it operated as a kind of strange attractor in some way for a lot of the historic land-owning families with, within the core. And, not the, and, and a process that's not something necessarily new. So in some instances where mortgage terms were not onerous, where the dictates mandating the terms of what households could do with their property were more flexible, and where households were not overly exhausted from long commutes and keeping their finances above water, these peripheral zones became important sites of tinkering and recalibration, acquiring nuances, and spawning very heterogeneous local economies. But then, in some ways, the, increasingly the periphery gets colonized by this kind of impetus of domesticating the kind of urban, urban population and the move toward emphasizing the notion of, of, of security. And so we have this, where vastly tracts of cheaply built, largely single-story dormitory-like small houses initially constructed with shiny surfaces and offered at low prices. So these were taken up in mass, particularly by a young generation of aspirant middle-class couples and households whose incomes could no longer match the escalating prices of rents and property values in the core and near suburbs, and where households wanted to retain a larger proportion of their disposable income for non-housing expenditure or saving. So often these tracts were legally mandated provisions of affordable housing which accompanied more upscale and lucrative developments of gated communities and new towns. But whatever the scenario, the developers of this cheap housing at the urban edges frequently cut and run after attaining a particular percentage of the sales, leaving households holding bank mortgages in developments whose infrastructures and services rapidly fell apart. So municipalities responsible for the territory attempted to make as little investment as possible. So at great distances from work and ill-served by public transportation, households were relegated to protracted periods of waiting. And in fact, there was a kind of mythology that in some sense people went to these areas because they had this sense that the core was moving toward them. That in some ways they were speculating that if they, if they, if they did this thing now, Within 10 years, this, the real city would eventually catch up with them, and then they would, well, they would be in great shape. So in, in, in some sense, that, 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 that they would be, that, that, that they would be re rewarded, and the concomitant appreciation of land value, value that process would entail. But many of these places, again, as, as to be anticipated 10 years later, have fallen apart completely and returned basically to the, to the bush or to a situation which they look like prior to when, when they were built. And so these are just, I mean, these are just some images of, 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 of some areas on the periphery that in some sense are right, right next to each other. Um, and without a way of really reaching each other. And this, but this particular image is, is of a textile, an artisanal textile factory, which I'll get back to in a, in, in, in a second. So then the question becomes then, in, in, in sense, of, in, after the, the aftermath of this kind of core to periphery move, what are the kinds of relays, what are the kinds of transactions which continue to provide some kind of sense of, of movement among them? And one of them is the kind of auto-constructed produce market at Kabairo and Lama, Lama in the center, which provides about 25% of all the food consumed by the city. This is a kind of self-constructed market taking place between the hours of 10 o'clock and 6 in the morning, 
and literally a quarter of the city's produce comes from this market, which, which in, in some sense enfolds about 25,000 people in, in, various, in, in, vari in various capacity and completely self-managed, self-regulated. Self, self, self and the importance, one of the importance of, 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 of this market is that the market as a constitution of specific actor entities whose operations did not pre-exist nor are limited to it. That is, the market isn't the suturing together of identities and functions that already coexist. It's not a kind of articulation of growers and drivers and rather these kinds of roles were themselves <coughs> constituted through the, the, the creation of the, of the market itself. And in some ways, what it lacks that it, it, it's then a constantly mutating, reshaping body, which in some sense, it, 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 its lack of, of the problematics it faces about internal cohesion, in some ways compensate for the, to mitigate its vulnerability to being in some sense interrupted or fragmented by external authorities. That it's shape-shifting all, all, all of the time. So it's not an operation that is in some sense artic the articulation of things that are already set in place. Rather, it's a locus for the continual renovation and mutation of the way in which people function in it so that external authorities who want to grab a piece of this action or make it not happen have a very difficult time getting a kind of foothold into it. Like, where does it take place? It's located here in a, in, in a given space, but where does the market begin, begin and end? And really, it's something that's really dispersed over a, 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 wide, a, a wide territory. And so in a sense, it's, it's a kind of management by relay across multiple interstices by keeping things in play. So growers and loaders and drivers and steers and parking attendants and unloaders and carters and sellers and coordinators and collectors and cleaners and hawkers messengers, repairs, technicians, and buyers, many have already circulated through each other's jobs. And the relationships can be both stabilized over time or subject to continuous reassembly. And that's the key to, in some sense, the endurance of, 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 of this operation. That it can be both stabilized over, over time, but also continuously remade when it, when it, when it in some sense, needs to be remade. So, it is a kind of diffractic knowledge. So here, in some sense, the process of disembedding particular nodes, transit, and processing site from their specificities of the relationships with particular locales, demographic compositions, and social economic histories and cultural practices requires an open-ended sense of how these sites now acting as nodes could be articulated in new and various ways. It entails how they are multiply situated in a plurality of different circulations, and this is a process that reiterates the fundamental instability of, of, of interconnectivity. And I call this a kind of generic instability in, in that it is the conditions through which, in some sense, a popular politics continuously under threat continues to endure in, 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 in some kind of way. And then, we, and then in, sense, in some sense, in terms of the, uh, the, the youth component, while we think of logistics as a matter of constructing the seamless transmission of commodities across discrete territories, youth themselves are often faced with the exigencies of transporting themselves across intensely differentiated environments and protocols, which require a continuous detachment of their understandings and performances from the context in which they, most be, they, which they may be most familiar and comfortable with. So whereas their parents went for, in some sense, the security, the supposedly security of this, we were interested in what happens to their kids. What happens to their kids that are now 16 and 21 year, years old? And in some sense, they're not going for the same kind of deal. So then the question becomes, well, then what is it that they are, in some sense, going for? So we looked at some of the large, in some sense, retail markets of, of, of the city, retail markets that have been around for, for, for a very long time, um, and selling mostly, cheaply, cheap, mostly locally produced textiles, 
from which that artisanal textile factory that looks like a slum also produces four. So in some sense, 30, 30 to 35 percent of everything that people wear in Jakarta is produced from, in some sense, situations like this. So here, here it's like the, these retail markets really employ thousands of young men and women. So watch them pour out of these places at 10 o'clock closing time and climb into buses and on motorcycles to go home. But home is rarely what you expect it to be for the youth, uh, largely between 16 and 21, who primarily live on their own in different combinations, sharing rooms that keep rent under $25 a month, essential given that most of them make perhaps no more than $100 per month. Now, while official statistics will point to severe housing deficits in Jakarta, the urban core now exudes a plenitude of short-term accommodation as the majority of households offer rooms to rent, add on additional stories to their existing houses in order to maximize the opportunities and ask little in the way of, of contracts. So these kids aren't going back to the periphery. A anymore. They've returned to the core, but to the core living in a very peripheral kind of mode of, uh, 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 of existence. And part of this is facilitated by what's happening to the core itself. Whereas urban surfaces situated on fundamental or variegated ambiguities of land status are marked by a diverse array of edifices and operations. It's important to, to note that in Jakarta there's no status of urban land. Freehold title constitutes maybe 2% of the entire hold, you know. So there's a fundamental ambiguity uh, of land. So these constitute a plurality of nodes that are simultaneously articulated and attached. Detached again in that they are not embedded or controlled in specific patterns or trajectories of relations. These plurality of nodes are points and platforms through which urban residents can circulate, string together, circulations as livelihoods and socialities, opportunities for information exchange, witnessing and recalibration. Strings of cheap accommodations in eating places, market and retail outlets that absorb large volumes of, of youth labor. And such plurality of nodes points to the importance of interfaces. And always again, it's not that, that the interfaces become these kinds of ge productive generative frictions. You work with the kinds of interfaces as a way to to, to mediate particular kinds of intersections amongst them, which provide all different kinds of opportunities, which was part of the problem within the, the, the built environment of the periphery, because there were no way in which these contiguities could, in some ways, reach each other. So young workers pouring out at closing time often canvass the city, looking for nothing in particularly, to particular, offer frequenting the 24-7 convenience stores where they sit for hours with a Coke and noodle soup, and watch what other youth are up to. And it's not that these youth are not without aspirations, plans, or methods for, for pursu pursuing particular trajectories. But they do not conceive any occupation as a destination, but simply something to pass through. I mean, we interviewed some 350 kids from the suburbs circulating the city between 16 and 21, and, all, and, and by the time they were 21, they already, on average, had 10 different jobs by the time they're, they're 21. So it's, it's as if the city were a proliferation of doors, devices that hinge rather than hedge futures, marking trajectories simultaneously connected and, and detached. And so while youth have always long carved out their separate worlds and supposed subcultures, perhaps what is new to Jakarta is the intensity of a collective indifference proffered by some youth particularly of lower and middle class and working class backgrounds. With somewhat marginal relationships to schooling, okay, so the one thing I wanted to, to end with is, is, this, is this notion of the, of the haunting of the, of, of, of the core by the suburb, which is in the figure of the Chabe Chabe. It's in the figure of the young girl, the young girl who circulates aimlessly through the city. And in some ways, this particular figure is demonized as, as a kind of failure on the part of the periphery to adequately domesticate the body of the urban resident. Because this is a, a transgressive body. So on the one hand, the Chabe Chabe is demonized, but on the other hand, celebrated in popular culture as it's the young woman who really knows the city. 
who knows all the ins and outs, who know where to find cheap rooming houses, who know how to find all of those kinds of hidden pathways and trajectories that are in some ways otherwise well, otherwise in, 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 in invisible. So these detached circulations exert a force that exceeds the bounds placed on them. They leak, they radiate, and affect in ways that cannot always be anticipated and controlled. Thus, any occurrence can ramify across each other, affecting and being affected in ways that exceed whatever infrastructure is available. Volatility becomes a default position, and in this sense, infrastructure is always built upon a kind of turbulence. And this turbulence may largely be constrained, but it don't go away. It's always there as if nothing really happens, and that nothing really happening is a kind of generic condition, indifferent to, this, to, the, to the absence of the, of the event. Okay, thank you very much. comment first before I uh, open up for questions. I just wanted to uh, call attention to that really interesting idea of density. We often just see density in a quantific, in a way of quantification, like how many people per, per square meter. But I like this idea of a density around possibilities and that when you have a density of possibilities, you have people who can, you said, I think, create exchanges freed from, the, freed from producing something useful, which I found very interesting given that normally we think of, of density as this is where something has to happen, and then that, that kind of function is imposed on that space on typical modernist uh, urbanism. So I liked this idea of maybe how we can rethink uh, our kind of uncritical acceptance of, uh, of density. Just my short comment. And now, maybe we can open it up, and then we can take a couple of questions. Or, yeah. and then uh, Igor. Igor. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued by the idea um, or the, the comment you made towards the end about youth you know, of all backgrounds mingling in the, in the center of the city. Um, I've, I've been thinking about that much in a very different context than the North American context, uh, observing similar things of you know, it being an age life cycle stage um, specific aspect uh, as opposed to, well, not as opposed to, but Currently, with class and sort of other divisions, um, but the question I want to ask is that some of the things you're describing are sort of having to rely on, you know, individual um, uh, skills and viewing occupation as something you pass through, and, and and what I'm hearing really is sort of a, a neoliberalization, right? Of, um, or, or in, well, which maybe in the Jakarta frame you you wouldn't think about it through necessarily that framework, maybe, but I'm wondering. So the question really is then: Is there, is there something here of the, you know these practices that may seem in some ways informal in this context, um, other in any other international context, we're actually moving towards something like that because we're dismantling the structures that sort of you know move people through different kinds of uh, careers much more stage-wise, and there was an end to things you did as opposed to this continuously having to reinvent yourself. Uh, and places to adapt to sort of this new, obviously constructed neoliberal reality, right? Igor? Igor and then we'll... My question was coming off similar to these things. And let me just kind of pose it a little differently. What are the type of socioeconomic and broader political changes taking place that they're clearly wonderful cultural, <coughs> interesting cultural changes? What are the wider socioeconomic One more question. Please. This is kind of uh, slightly different. Uh, thank you. It is uh, very invigorating the kind of ideas you're throwing. And I like what you had to say about articulation and alliances. But it was a, a c category of relays, which has a particular kind of directionality, which kind of confused me. So in terms of not confused, I was wondering if you can play further with that. But not just a relay between core and periphery, because these relays are even wider. And the idea which you were you know, uh, uh, suggesting is to think about the, uh, sort of the instability of the interconnectivity, which goes, it doesn't have necessarily a relay direction, in fact, far more circular and dense. So I was thinking, okay, could you elaborate on why and why you think relay is a 
a useful term to think through? Because in, in, in some sense, the, 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 the macroeconomic structure of Jakarta is such that prior forms of collective life, the way in which districts were able to mobilize their heterogeneity in order to negotiate particular kinds of configurations of stability are, are no longer really available, no longer really a, a, a accessible. So in some ways, um, the, the question becomes, how does a kind of particular mode of paying attention, collective attention to what others are doing, manifest themselves in a kind of form which enables it to endure somehow within a climate which in some ways makes people more and more responsible for themselves. So in some sense, the, the, the relay talks about itineraries and circuits of intersection, of transactions that are oftentimes provisional and fleeting, but which enable particular kinds of momentary exchanges of information, collaborations, which don't in some ways have a long-term platform to protect themselves. Not that in some sense that, 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 that those kinds of long-term trajectories of consolidation are, are, not in, are not important. But in a climate where old-fashioned political and community organizing don't seem to be available, and where most, most, uh, most associations of residents come together to talk about the price, that is, what price do we hold out for, then what other kinds of medium, what other kinds of modalities are there which in some ways are capable of intersecting? And so in, in some ways, it, in, in some ways um, you know, we can, we, can learn a lot, we can learn a lot about the, the histories of African-American fugitivity where even on the run, there were particular concretizations of collective life where you weren't stabilized in any particular point, but yet you could, be, you could have the opportunity to think about how do you operate in concert. I mean, this, is, this seems to me to, 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 be the, to be the key. I mean, if you have to do it in some sense through, 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 through a marketing system, if you have to do it through always having to learn how to live in temporary situations with five, six, seven other, other people, if it means that your entire career is spent within one market, and all that you can do is circulate within the confines of that market, in some ways by incrementally adjusting yourself to have a, a marginally different kind of a different kind of position. These are not individual. These are not individual behaviors. These are these are behaviors that are done in terms of particular kinds of intersections of youth. So in, in some sense, I, I, the the the. The, I understand what you're getting at in terms of the, a certain kind of neoliberal creation of a subject, but it's, it, in some sense it's not that, you know? That it comes close to it, it appropriates aspects of that, but it doesn't mean that we, uh, on the surface we should recognize everything as simply that. 